the powers that be, specifically the progressive powers that be, are after your kids. And they have been for a very long time. The time has come for parents to do something about it. And not just do something about it, but understand what we are up against, who specifically we're up against. That's why my friend Liz Wheeler, the host of The Liz Wheeler Show, wrote this book, Hide Your Children, Exposing the Marxists Behind the Attack on America's Kids. We have a fascinating conversation today. You are going to love hearing her articulate what is in this book, why she wrote it. It's a perfect setup for actually reading the book and understanding and uh, ingesting everything, uh, all the information that she has given us in the book, all the tools that she's given us uh, for how to apply the information that she is supplying us with. And so I know you're going to love this discussion I'm having with her. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Allie at checkout. This GoodRanchers.com. Code Allie. All right, Liz, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you've got a new book, Hide Your Children, Exposing the Marxists Behind the Attack on America's Kids. Tell us about this. Hi, Allie. Thanks so much for having me on the show. It's it's fun to talk to you on air. We talk so yes. often off the air that it's fun when we get to be on a show together. Yes, my new book just came out last week. Uh, it's called Hide Your Children, Exposing the Marxists Behind the Attack on America's Kids. And it really started as a question that I think a lot of us parents had, especially during COVID, we would look over our children's shoulders on Zoom school and we'd see that there was poison being poured into their minds, whether it was critical race theory or the transgender ideology or just good old fashioned moral relativism, your truth and my truth more important than the truth. And it seems to me that this was a more concerted effort than ever before to attack our children. So I set out to find out why. It turns out the answer to that is not so much why, but who, who is behind this attack. And what I discovered is it's not new. This attack has been ongoing for nearly a century. Actually, the left has been trying to re-engineer our society. And unfortunately, they've been quite successful at it. They have captured what I call four out of the five major foundational cultural institutions. They've captured the media. They've captured the education system. They've captured a lot of religious institutions. They've captured the law. And they've just about destroyed the nuclear family as well. There is one element of the nuclear family left standing. That's children, which probably explains why the left has set their target on our children. So what I do in my book is I name the names of the people behind the capture of our institutions, the people behind the attack on America's children. And then I offer a solution, which Ali, I will tell you, is different than the solution the Republican Party offers for how we can retake our institutions and protect our children. I think it's very important to protect our children for the sake of their individual souls. Of course, every parent feels this way, but it's also vitally important to our nation. If we allow the left to capture our kids, then our nation is done and none of us want that. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the why behind their strategy. So we'll talk about the who, but why do these people who are trying to prey upon our children, uh, as communists have done for a very long time, or really totalitarians of every stripe have done for a very long time, uh, why the children? Well, if you look at the nuclear family, the nuclear family has always been the bulwark against evil. It's always been the institution around which society was properly engineered. Here in our own country, that's certainly true. We wouldn't be able to have a limited government, a small government, if we weren't relying on married couples to take care of their own children versus relying on the government. As you said, communists and Marxists have focused on trying to destroy the nuclear family for a long time. I believe there are religious undertones to this as well. The nuclear family is not just uh, an institution of secular society. The nuclear family is a reflection of Christ's love for his church. A married couple is supposed to be this, this example on earth of the mystical love that Christ has for his church, where the, you know, the husband is the head and uh, sacrifices his, his life for his wife and his wife respects and submits to his mission to protect her and to sanctify her and to help her be holy and get to heaven. This is an existential threat to communists because communism is at its core a satanic ideology. It rejects natural law. It rejects the human person and the freedom that our, our creator endowed us with. 
So we've seen throughout the course, even of American history, we've seen communists and Marxists come after the elements of the nuclear family. There are five elements. There's man, there's woman, there's marriage, there's sex, and there's children. We've seen radical feminism go after women and tell women that, you know, we shouldn't actually serve the role in society that God created us to serve as wives and as mothers. We've been degraded and told that that is meaningless, that our worth lies only in the amount of money that comes in a paycheck. Men are under sustained assault right now in our country with the Me Too movement, this assault on the idea of presumption of innocence until or unless proven guilty. I mean, you have grifters, con men like Andrew and Tristan Tate telling young men that what it really means to be a man is to be materialistic and exploit women. This is an assault on masculinity. Marriage, conservatives surrendered marriage to the left a long time ago. And I know that this can be an unpopular thing even for Republicans and conservatives, even for some Christians to discuss, although I confess that one's a little of a head scratcher to me if it's <laughs> uncomfortable for Christians. But conservatives rendered marriage to gay marriage out of this false idea of just being tolerant or being inclusive when really it, it, it gave away, it broke the institution uh, of marriage, what it means in our country, in addition to giving politicians or judges this role of being allowed to redefine words, being the arbiters of truth, which is just authoritarianism. Sex has been under sustained assault. The proper ordered uh, form of sex, the proper place of sex within a monogamous marriage, that's been under assault since the sexual revolution, as we all know. So there's really one element left of the nuclear family that needs to be compromised for the family to be destroyed, and that's children. Marxists understand that if they can radically alienate children from parents, if they can destroy parental rights, if they can cause children to turn willingly turn against their parents, then what is the purpose of, of a nuclear family, even in practicality, let alone the spiritual implications of it? So I think that this is, this is really their, their moment of truth, if you will. They understand, the Marxists understand that their time to impose this Marxism on our country is now or never, which is why they are so relentlessly, so deliberately assaulting our children as blatantly as they are. We talk a lot about the parallel economy that conservatives and Christians are creating because we don't want to support these companies that are uh, supporting causes that we don't believe in. We want to make sure that we are aligning our dollars with where our principles are. And so we want to support companies that are fighting for the same things that we are. And that's why I love Public Square. They make that really easy. They provide all kinds of alternatives to these woke progressive companies that we no longer want to support. So if you're looking for clothing, if you're looking for uh, baby items, all different kinds of things. All you have to do is download the Public Square app. It's spelled Public SQ, and you can see the alternative uh, alternatives to the companies that you no longer want to support because of their politics. Also, you can enter your zip code, and then local businesses that you may want to support will pop up there. For example, if you want to support the local Christian coffee shop or the coffee shop that defied COVID mandates, you can find them there and you can go and support them. You can also list your business for free. So if you are a business owner and you want like-minded people to patronize your business, then you should list it on Public Square. Just go to publicsq.com. That's publicsq.com or you can download it on the app store. That's publicsq.com. And, you know, obviously kids, God created them to be vulnerable. God created them to be malleable. Um, they created them to care about authority, care about pleasing authority. They made them or God made them to be extremely teachable, which is why he also created the family, because parents have an instinct to seek after the well-being and the best interests of their child in a way that even the best teacher can't. I mean, even very good teachers and educators and mentors simply don't have the same interest and the same instinct towards protection of children as the parents do. Um, and yet parents have been convinced, I think, to kind of uh, delegate that responsibility of what is essentially discipleship. All education is discipleship. Um, and that responsibility of formation to strangers that they don't know in any kind of education system, but particularly the public education system, which we know is dominated mostly by progressive ideology. 
And really, that's not new. Like, if you look at the history of public education, it has been about conformity. It's been about indoctrination. And now we just have a particular kind of indoctrination, which is an indoctrination uh, against what we know about gender, what we know about truth, what we know about morality, what we know about history. It's a destruction of all things good and right and true. Not speaking for every single classroom of every single school, but the system at large, from the teachers unions to the education department, like we know where they're coming from. And yet a lot of well-meaning parents just willingly, voluntarily, happily surrender their kids to the indoctrination of this ideology for hours and hours every week. And then we wonder why America goes the direction that it has gone But it's because these people are extremely militant in the recruitment of our children and have been for a very long time, right? Yeah, it's so interesting that you bring this up because one of the points that I make in my book is that indoctrination itself is a morally neutral term. It's not good in and of itself. It's not bad in and of itself. It's what's being indoctrinated that determines whether indoctrination is good or bad. In fact, public schooling in the United States didn't become compulsory, didn't become mandatory until 1852. Massachusetts was the first state to make public education mandatory. And the reason that they did this was not to teach children reading, writing, and arithmetic. It wasn't about what we would consider academic subjects. The reason they did this is because at the time, there were a lot of immigrants coming to our nation Mm -hmm. and specifically Catholic immigrants coming to our nation. And the Protestant politicians at the time wanted these children coming to our nation who had been born in another country to be loyal first to the United States. So they wanted them indoctrinated in American civics. And these Protestant politicians were pretty anti-Catholic and wanted these children to be indoctrinated into what they termed Protestant values. I find this to be so fascinating because Mm -hmm. our education system, our public education system was never intended to be neutral. It was always intended to indoctrinate children. It was just intended at the beginning to indoctrinate children in good things and what's good and right and beautiful religious values and American values. But somewhere along the way, the people who had made public education mandatory, understanding that it was, that the purpose of it was indoctrination, surrendered the power of that institution, allowed it to be captured by communists and Marxists who also understood that the public education system was intended for indoctrination. They then took it over. And for the last 50 years, they've dominated education from K through 12, through the university level. And yeah, it's no wonder that so many people in in our generation, so many people in Gen Z, even younger, it's no wonder so many of them are anti-American. They are anti-Christian. They believe in moral relativism. They don't understand debate. They're anti-free speech. And I know it can sound like a difficult challenge when you call out individual parents for this, but one of the things that I've been very encouraged by during the writing, the last year that I've spent writing this book, is recognizing the the movement that's been happening in our country since COVID. So many parents have had their eyes open to the fact that they have been essentially walking blindly, that they have been deferring to the authority of teachers and public health officials and pediatricians and librarians and all of these people that we colloquially call the experts and parents for the first time in my lifetime, I'm seeing parents say, well, wait a second, maybe these experts aren't correct. Maybe they're not basing their advice and their mandates in science or reality. Maybe they're ideologically driven and maybe I should think for myself. And I find that more encouraging than, than, focusing on the parents that are that are still willfully putting their heads in the sand. Okay, y'all, it is time. It is time for you to subscribe to Good Ranchers if you haven't already, or you can just try it out once. Get yourself a box of meat. This is all American meat. This is better than organic chicken. Some of it's pre- pre-marinated, some of it's not pre-marinated. You can Uh, take your pick. And then they've got all different cuts of steak. They've got ground beef, which we use a ton in our house. They've got seafood. They've even got amazing pork. They've got all kinds of stuff, all from American farms and ranches. The family that owns Good Ranchers, they're amazing. They're Christians. They're conservatives. They've got the same values that you and I do. So there's really no reason not to get your meat from Good Ranchers. Ranchers. If you're going to the grocery store, you're probably getting imported meat and you're paying way too much for low quality 
stuff. You're going to save a lot of money by subscribing. They lock in your price for two years when you subscribe today. Plus, if you go to GoodRanchers.com and you use code Allie at checkout, you get $30 off your order. So there's just no reason not to do this. This is good for you. It's good for your family. It's good for your wallet too. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Allie at checkout. That's GoodRanchers.com. Code Allie. I know that can be a difficult conversation, but you know, I've talked about this. You've talked about this a lot over the past few years, just recognizing what indoctrination is. You make such a good point that if you break down the word indoctrination, you're placing doctrines in someone. There are good doctrines and there are bad doctrines. There are true doctrines and there are false doctrines. And so every bit of education is indoctrination. I hear a lot of people say, you know, kids shouldn't be taught what to think, how to, but they should just be taught how to think. Well, Kind of, but not really. Yes, of course, it's important to teach kids how to think. But of course, we teach kids what to think too. Not just how to come to the conclusions, but what the conclusions actually are. And especially when it comes to parenting. Parenting, education is discipleship. And when you think about education like that, that, okay, your kids are being made into disciples of someone, of something. It's just a matter of what is it? Like, what are they following? Who are they following? I think the left understands that. The left understands that there's, it's not just about how to think. It is about what to think. That it's, there's not a neutral ground. That education is not neutral. The law is not neutral. The public square is not neutral. And yet some conservatives, although I think you're right, they're waking up, they still believe that we can get back to a time when everything it's just neutral. There is some like neutral secular space that we can all be in where our values are just like mutually agreed upon based on no cohesive worldview. I just I don't think that that's possible. I, I, I think that that is actually why the left wins so well, because, as you said, there's a religious undertone, I think, to Marxism and they are in the business of conquest, religious conquest, based on a very specific pseudo-religious worldview, and they recognize that neutrality is a myth. I'm not sure that conservatives get that. No, not at all. I, I agree with you. I don't think there's any such thing as neutrality. I think that either the left is controlling these institutions or we are. I, I, I don't believe in this idea of this, this even playing field where we all can remove our values and thus every individual can simply choose to live his or her life however, however we want. In fact, the second half of my book, I think I'm prouder of than the first half of my book. The first half is about the individuals and the organizations that are behind the capture of the institutions behind the attack on America's children. And the second half of the book, you could call a critique of the Republican Party yeah. for the exact reasons that you mentioned, because the Republican Party is supposed to be the bulwark against these attacks. They're supposed to be the ones fighting against communism and Marxism, and they've failed. You can you can look at look at any library right now, the children's sections of any library, look at pull up your Twitter and look at the drag queen story hour. I mean, our society's in chaos right now. And the reason for this is the Republican Party has lost sight of a very important question. And that question is, if we, as the United States of America, are supposed to be a free country, what does that mean? Is freedom the ultimate end or is freedom the means to something greater? And I'll tell you, Ali, this is something that I've changed my mind on in the last few years. It started actually back at CPAC in 2016, eight years ago. I had just spoken on the main stage and afterward I was out in the lobby being interviewed about my speech and about the, the candidates. It was the exciting primary. And this independent journalist comes up to me and asks me, what do you think the role of government should be in our country and how do you define liberty? And I remember being surprised at the time because most of the questions were, do you think Marco Rubio is going to beat Ted Cruz? Do you think Donald Trump will be the nominee? It was mostly about politics, not policy. And I remember giving this guy a pretty, a pretty uh, libertarian answer. Oh, I think government should stay off our lawn and mind its own business unless it's protecting inherent rights, God-given rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the journalist follows up and says, okay, well then do you believe in the legalization of drugs? And I was like, well, what kind of drugs? Are you talking about meth? Are you talking about heroin? Are you talking about fentanyl, cocaine? And he said, sure. And I said, well, no, I don't think that we should legalize drugs. And he says, why not? And I, I answered and say, well, because that would cause destruction in our society. Clearly, that would lead to chaos. 
And he asks me, he says, well, do you think that your answer to this question is a contradiction of your definition of liberty and how you think government or what role you think government should play in our society? And I remember at the time in, in my head kind of being like, huh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> It turns out the guy was an activist, not a journalist. He was an activist for marijuana legalization. But this conversation stuck with me for years and years because mm. he's wrong about marijuana, but he is correct about this libertarian idea of liberty. And I realized that if we embrace this idea that freedom is the ultimate end, then what David French said about Drag Queen Story Hour being a blessing of liberty is in fact correct even though you and I and everyone watching and listening to the show knows that it's not moral, there's no morality to that, it's grotesque, it's evil, it's satanic. And so if freedom is not, if it cannot be the end up into itself because it leads to immorality, then freedom must be the means to something greater. And the Republican party has forgotten to answer this question. We've forgotten to ask, well, what is the something greater? How do we want our society to be ordered? What do we mean when we say we want human flourishing? We've just completely neglected to answer that question. We've been so busy pointing out what's wrong because it's fairly easy to identify what's wrong. And we've forgotten to define and then offer what is right in its stead. And it's led us to this chaos. Okay, I don't know if you guys have heard about this transition that a lot of big countries are making uh, to digital currency. It's pretty scary because then the government can track every single purchase that you make. And of course, the Federal Reserve in the U.S. is considering doing the same thing. And so it's a good thing to consider to ensure that some of your savings are independent from the U.S. dollar. So you should consider diversifying into gold, maybe converting a portion of your savings into gold. This is a hard asset that can protect you from some of the unpredictable things that could happen in the future with the economy. People absolutely love working with Birch Gold. They've got an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. They've got thousands of happy customers, countless five-star reviews. And if you just want to learn more about this, they've got a free info kit that they're offering you. There's no obligation with this info kit, but you can text Allie to 989-898. They'll send you all that free information. You can learn more about it and then talk to them to see if this is right for you. Text Allie to 989-898 for that free info kit on gold. Allie to 989-898. I think a lot of us have had the evolution that you just described. Really what stunned me about what you just said is that 2016 was eight years ago or was seven years ago, right? How many years ago was it? Seven years seven ago. Seven years ago. What? How is that possible, first of all? Um, but secondly, I think that a lot of us feel the same way. Like we saw, we've seen through COVID, we've seen through the just the speed at which the moral devolution uh, is going and the sexual revolution or devolution, however you want to describe that. I think that we've just all had that kind of whiplash that you described and realized, OK, the role of the government has to be a little bit different than just live and let live. And of course, you do believe in a level of liberty, of course. And I know the left always accuses the right of being authoritarian, which is laughable when you actually look at their policies. But what you're saying is what the left has said for a long time, that there is no neutral ground and that liberty has to be tethered to something. The left believes that, too, that liberty has to be tethered to things that I think are immoral and wrong and must must be constrained for different reasons and in different ways than what we believe. But the right also believes that too. Like we also believe that there are limitations, but we believe that our limitations and our reasons for our limitations are actually good, that our parameters, that our definitions, that the morality that we are espousing is good. Um, and so I do, I agree with you that conservatives just kind of need to come to terms with that and realize like, Morality really exists. Right and wrong really exists. Good and bad really exists. The reason why we believe that we are endowed with certain inalienable rights is because there's a creator who created all of these things. Um, so tell us a little bit more about like how specifically we apply that knowledge that everyone needs to come to terms with. That doesn't mean we have to agree on everything theologically. You're Catholic. I'm Protestant. We're not going to agree on all theology, but we agree 
as conservatives, we agree that our rights come from somewhere, that morality and truth come from somewhere, that these things are authoritative and that that authority transcends the power of the government. Like we've got to agree on that in order to build from there, from that foundation in order to push back on the assault that is the religious Marxism from the left. So tell us a little bit more about what that looks like. That's exactly right. So what's really interesting is this idea that I'm proposing isn't a new idea. This is actually our constitutional heritage. So if you look at the Declaration of Independence, if you'll allow me to get a little historically nerdy for a moment, the Declaration of Independence, written by Thomas Jefferson, um, used the ideas or the definition of liberty of John Locke, who was essentially libertarian. He believed in the that a society should be as close to absolute freedom, meaning animalistic anarchy, if you will, as possible for a civilized society. And after the Declaration of Independence, a brilliant document, you know, I have no quibble with it, of course, we, we had the Articles of Confederation, which essentially embraced John Locke's view on liberty as well, this libertarian view on liberty. And it resulted in chaos in the United States of America. It, it was unworkable for us to be a cohesive nation. And so we had the Constitutional Convention, and this Constitution that came from this convention was not a libertarian document at all. It did not resemble the Articles of Confederation. It did not resemble any of John Locke's ideas on liberty. Instead, James Madison, the father of our Constitution, the author of our Constitution, he grappled with this same question. If liberty is not the ultimate end, it is the means to something greater, what is that something greater? And in Federalist Paper number 51, he gave us the answer. He said, the definition of liberty is justice. So the something greater that liberty is the tool to use to achieve is justice. And mm. what's more, he pulled, Madison pulled this from Edmund Burke. Edmund Burke also defined liberty as justice, but he went a step further. He said the definition of justice, because of course that's the question that follows. Well, right. okay, liberty is justice, but what is justice? He said the definition of justice is original justice, capital O, capital J. And what he meant by that is he meant biblical justice. He mm -hmm. meant natural law. Now, a lot of people are going to respond to this and say, well, are you talking about theocracy, Liz? Are you talking about religion? And the answer is no, I'm not talking about theocracy. But yes, I am talking about religion. The foundation of our country was built on this shared understanding of the definition of right and wrong and man and woman and marriage and immorality and morality and liberty and justice. And you don't have to be any kind of religious person. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be a Jew to understand that that is the necessary component or the component that is necessary for our society to be cohesive. We have to have a, a uh, foundational agreement on the definition of these foundational terms. And our nation already has that. We Democrats don't like it. They try to reject it. They, they don't like our country or anything we stand for. Republicans have just lost sight of the fact that it's okay to have morality and moral order in our laws and in our society. That is in no way a breach of the separation of church and state because it's requiring no one to worship a God that they don't want to or go to church when they don't want to. It's no religious participation necessary, which would be what a violation of church and state would be. It is instead an understanding that we can't have a society unless we agree that there are some objective truths and it's already written into our constitution what those objective truths are. It's just up to us as conservatives. This is what I challenge people in my book to reclaim that and restore it so that we can restore order in our society. All right, y'all, let me tell you about Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. Unlike the other big name wireless providers, they're actually supporting the causes that you and I are, like the sanctity of life, our veterans, our first responders, the First and Second Amendment. And so this is just another great company that you can align with, and you are not going to have to sacrifice uh, the quality of your coverage because they offer the dependable nationwide coverage on all three major networks so you get the best possible service in your area without worrying about supporting progressive politics by giving your money to some of these other companies that are supporting causes that we quite frankly hate. So go ahead, make the switch to Patriot Mobile. You can go to patriotmobile.com slash Allie. Use code Allie for free activation. Their 100% US-based customer service team makes switching really, really easy. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash Allie. Use code Allie. Patriotmobile.com slash Allie. Code Allie.
And, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, myself included, have complained that the left seems so much more cohesive, so much more able to build coalitions and to accomplish something than the right. But, you know, I thought about it. I'm like, well, there is a there's a reason for that. There's a fundamental reason for that. Uh, the leftist ideology, progressivism, Marxism, whatever you want to call it, collective, the collectivism that we see from the left, it is only destroying. It is really easy to just give a random person a sledgehammer and to not care how they go about it, to not care what they're destroying, as long as they're destroying something, as long as they are given a tool to tear down these institutions, to tear down the family, to tear down all the things that we're talking about. You don't really have to have a game plan. You don't have to have a shared foundation. You don't really have to have a cohesive moral vision. You don't even have to know what you're going to build after everything is destroyed. You're just in the business of destruction. So it's kind of easy to just link arms with someone who wants to take a bulldozer to things. But for the right, we're trying to build. We're not just trying to destroy. And in order to build, you have to have a foundation. It's not going to work if your foundation is sticks, my foundation is sand, their foundation is stone. Like we all need to have the same foundation. That is the difficulty of coming together with conservatives because I agree with you 100%. Unless we all, at the very least, have the shared foundational understanding of who is ultimately in charge, where our rights come from, that there is a supreme transcendent right and wrong, that virtue really actually objectively exists, and that our laws have to flow from these things while not compelling people to worship Jesus the way that you and I do. Um, unless we start there, then it's not going to work. Like we can agree on a lot of different things. There are right. atheists, secular, leftists that I agree with on gender and different things. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if we don't agree on the foundation and then build from there, we're lost. And what I really love is that you talk specifically, it's specific in the second half of your book of how we do this. It's not just what you just articulated. It's specific. Okay, so we start at the foundation. We know who's behind it, first half of the book, which we don't even have time to get into. I really encourage people to read it because it's so interesting how you track all the people and how it connects to like modern people in charge today. Insane. But the second half of the book is like, okay, we've got, we know who's behind it. Here's our moral vision. And here's exactly how we execute it, right? Yes. So what's funny is my editor, when I gave him the first draft of that last chapter, he said, this is intimidating, Liz, even for a president of the United States, let alone a flustered parent. And I tell this, I tell this little tale on him because that's what I intended it to be. I'm tired of the platitudes and the cliches and the just make sure your home is in order and everything else politically and culturally will follow narratives that we've been hearing for the last 50 years from the Republican Party. Yes, so of course you should, as an individual, have your affairs in order. Of course you should have moral order in your family. But conservatives have forgotten that limited government doesn't mean that all government is bad or immoral. Limited government simply means that our government has enumerated powers, it has limits to it, and it's accountable to us, to we the people. That's what limited government means. It doesn't mean that government has no just authority yes. to help order our society. And yet the Republican Party has fallen for the false idea. And you can see this, by the way, Chris Christie is a really good example uh, of this right now, because he refuses to, um, or he condemns states that are trying to ban transgender surgeries for children because he said that's not a limited government viewpoint. And I almost laughed oh when I heard this because I thought, well, what are you, what do you think the morality of limited government is right. if it's going to allow children to have their genitals mutilated in the name of a Marxist ideology? No, no. Government has just authority and it's time for Republicans and conservatives to understand that the just authority of government should be harnessed to properly order our society along these foundational truths. I call it natural law because it means natural law is this reason that God instilled in each and every one of us that we don't need, it's not, our, our idea of right and wrong is not entirely nurture, it's nature. We can discern what's right and wrong for ourselves. We know in our guts what is right and wrong. That is natural law. English law, which is what the constitution was built on, was built on natural law. This is our historical legacy here. So I have a list of 12 um, governmental ways that conservatives and Republicans must, they should, but they must use the government to properly order society. Otherwise, 
we are going to continue in this chaos that we are living. Sometimes these things can't be done just you and me at home, Allie. It can't be done just go to church and raise your children according to biblical values. Those are great things, necessary things, moral things. Sometimes it takes our collective effort to pressure our elected officials to do the right thing at the governmental level, to harness the government's just authority mm-hmm. to make sure our society is ordered along, along natural law. Totally. Our constitution was made for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for any other kind of people. Right now, we really don't have a moral and religious society, unfortunately. And I agree with you. That's, of course, if we could snap our fingers, like we would change the hearts of the people so that they are inclined toward God. Like we all want that kind of spiritual revolution to happen, that kind of reawakening, but it doesn't have to be either or. We can pray for that. We can work toward that. We can hope for that. We can live that out in our homes, but God has also instituted the government. Romans 13, we see that there is a reason for laws. There is a reason for the government. There is a reason for the state. And as you said, it must be used to pursue justice, to constrain evil and to promote what is good. That is straight up biblical. And it's also what happens to be good for everyone too. Um, Liz, that is so powerful. I am so excited for your book. That's already doing super well. Um, I encourage everyone to go out and get it. They can get it wherever books are sold, right? You can, you can go to hideyourchildrenbook.com, hideyourchildrenbook.com or Amazon, Barnes and Noble or anywhere else that, that books are sold. I appreciate everyone picking up this copy. I think you will find it to be Uh, a lot. There's a lot of information in there, but my hope is that once you read this, you are inspired for the fight. And these are the tools that we have been asking for for decades for how to actually retake our country from these Marxists. Hideyourchildrenbook.com. Hideyourchildrenbook.com. Liz, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Allie. (laughs) 